the At The Light podcast. Today we will begin the second chapter of Dante's Inferno, which covers the descent. Um, It also showcases Dante's first protest and Virgil's appeal to him. Um, Last chapter we were introduced to Virgil, and that is Dante's guide through the Inferno. And also in this chapter, we will have the intercession of the three ladies, Benedite. With that, let us begin. Day was departing, and the embrowned air released the animals that are on earth from their fatigues. And I, the only one, made myself ready to sustain the war, both of the way and likewise of the woe, which memory that heirs not shall retrace. O muses, O high genius, now assist me. O memory that didst write down what I say, here thy nobility shall be manifest. And I began. Poet who guidest me, regard my manhood, if it be sufficient, ere to the arduous pass thou dost confide mine. Thou sayest that of Silvius the parent, while yet corruptible unto the world, immortal went and was there bodily. But if the adversary of all evil was courteous, thinking of the high effect that issue would from him and who and what to men of intellect unmeet to it seems not. For he was of great Rome and of her empire, in the imperial heaven as father chosen, and which and what wishing to speak the truth, were established at the holy place wherein sits the successor of the greatest Peter, upon this journey whence thou givest him vaunt. Things did he hear which the occasions were both of his victory and the papal mantle. Thither went afterward the chosen vessel, to bring back comfort thence unto the faith, which of salvation's way is the beginning. But I would thither come, or who concedes it? I not Aeneas am, I am not Paul, nor I nor others think me worthy of it. Therefore, if I resign myself to come, I fear the coming, may be ill-advised. Thereto wise and knowest better think I speak. And as he is, who unwills what he willed, and by new thoughts doth his intentions change, so that from his design he quite withdraws, such I became upon that dark hillside. Because in thinking I consumed the emprise, which was so very prompt in the beginning. If I have well thy language understood, replied that shade of magnanimous, thy soul attained is with cowardice, which many times a man encumbers so, it turns him back from honored enterprise, as false sight doth a beast when he is shy, that thou mayst free thee from thy apprehension, I'll tell thee why I came and what I heard at the first moment when I grieved for thee. Among those was I who are in suspense, and a fair saintly lady called to me. In such wise I besought her to command me. Her eyes were shining brighter than the star, and she began to say, gentle and low, with voice angelical in her own language, O spirit, Courteous of Mantua, of whom the fame still in the world endures, and shall endure, long-lasting as the world, a friend of mine, and not the friend of fortune, upon the desert slope, is so impeded, upon his way that he has turned through terror, and may, I fear, already be so lost, that I too late have risen to his secure, from that which I have heard of him in heaven. Bestir thee now, and with thy speech ornate, and with what needful is for his release, assist him so, that I may be consoled. Beatrice I am, 
who do hide thee go? I come from there where I would fain return. Love moved me, which compelleth me to speak. While I shall be in penance of my Lord, full often will I praise thee unto him. Then paused she, and thereafter I began, O lady of virtue, thou alone, through whom the human race exceedeth all contained, within the heaven that hath the lesser circles, too grateful unto me is thy commandment, to obey, if twere already done were late, no farther needst thou ope to me thy wish, but the cause tell me why thou dost so shun the here descending down into this center, from the vast place thou burnst to return to. Since thou wouldst fain so inwardly discern, briefly I will relate, she answered me, why I am not afraid to enter here, of those things only should one be afraid, which have the power of doing others harm, of the rest, no, because they are not fearful. God in his mercy such created me, that misery of yours attains me not, nor any flame assails me of this burning. A gentle lady is in heaven who grieves at this impediment to which I sent thee, so that stern judgment there above is broken. In her entreaty she besought Lucia, and said, Thy faithful one now stands in need of thee, and unto thee I recommend him. Lucia, foe of all that cruel is, hastened away and come unto the place, where I was sitting with the ancient Rachel. Beatrice, said she, the truest praise of God, why securest thou not him, who loved thee so? For thee he issued from the vulgar herd. Dost thou not bear the pity of his plaint? Dost thou not see the death that combats him? Does that flood where ocean has not vaunt? Never were persons in the world so swift to work their wheel and to escape their woe. As I, after such words as these were uttered, come hither downward from my blessed seat, confiding in thy defending course, which honors thee and those who listen to it. After thus had she had spoken unto me, weeping, her shining eyes she turned away, whereby she made me swifter in my coming, and unto thee I came as she desired. I have delivered thee from that wild beast, which bared the beautiful mountain's short ascent. What is it then? Why, why dost thou delay? Why is such baseness bedded in thy heart? Daring in hardihood, why hast thou not? Seeing that three such ladies, Benedite, are caring for thee in the court of heaven, and so much good my speech doth promise thee. Even as the flowerets, by nocturnal chill, bowed down and closed when the sun wit wittens them, uplift themselves all open on their stems, such I became with my exhausted strength, and such good courage to my heart there coursed, that I began, like interpreted person, O she compassionate, who secured me, a courteous thou, who hast obeyed so soon, the words of truth which she addressed to thee. Thou hast my heart so with desire disposed to the adventure with these words of thine, that to my first intent I have returned. Now go, for one soul with is in us both, thou leader and thou lord and master thou. Thus said I to him, and when he had moved, I entered on the deep and savage way. All right, everyone, that makes up chapter two of Dante's Inferno. And in this chapter, we get the establishment of the beginning of the relationship between Virgil and Dante, Virgil being our guide through the Inferno and Dante being our writer slash narrator slash main character. And we also are introduced to Beatrice who is Dante's great love and be it becomes very clear through the story that she is one of the main drives behind most of his um, motivations so to speak 
this story is just about to begin. Chapter 3, we get the entrance into hell. So be sure to come back for the next chapter. I will see you then. Give us a like and a subscribe. Be sure to hit the notification bell so that way YouTube lets you know when I release the next video. See you later for now.